<laughs> and just a reminder, you have around four minutes and 30 seconds to speak. You have to do that because I want to leave a little bit of time for questions. We're going to that. Uh, yes, I occupy Wall Street. You know, the, the workers of the world, the workers in the oppressed, wherever they are, are fighting as best as they can under the circumstances. The brutal austerity, I know we're all thinking of Greece, which they're trying to make an example out of. You're the next Greece, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that's significant about the Occupy movement, and it's not just here, it's all over the world. Not just Tahrir Square, but Spain, other countries in Europe. It's a global movement. Occupy is its manifestation here. Is that it's the first resistance reaction to the specific characteristics of this new, terrible, permanent world crisis of capitalism. One of the dynamics of that crisis is that hundreds of millions of young people, mostly educated, some very educated people with not only one degree but several degrees, who formally were promised a place in the system, are no longer promised that place. And that's big. And some of them are rebelling. And that may not be the only uh, uh, thing that's going on with Occupy Wall Street, but it's one of the big things that's providing this fresh crop <coughs> of angry as hell revolutionaries. So, now, they did not invent resistance. Some of them, because they're new, may think they did. You got to cut new people some slack. And they have their baggage uh, based on the fact that they're predominantly white and uh, at least formally they come from a very privileged background, some of them. They haven't had to deal with racism and poverty and other things. And they're still grappling with solidarizing themselves with black and brown people, frankly. But even with that baggage, and I don't want to belittle it, because a lot of people are very angry about it. Even with that baggage, what they've done over a few months until the state decided to shut them down, basically, and it was Homeland Security. They push the working class struggle in this country forward. Maybe, we'll see, maybe light years. This is a big challenge for the revolutionary movement, for the Marxist movement. The politics of the rank and file of the Occupy movements all over the place. They're anti-capitalists, we know that. Uh, they are influenced by different strands of, of anarchism, but that doesn't represent the strength of anarchism so much as it represents the weakened influence currently of Marxism because of the setbacks that our movement on a global scale has suffered. We do know that many of these young revolutionaries indeed want to be revolutionaries and are open and want ideology and want Marxism. The question is, how do we influence them? One thing I would suggest is that we be mindful of our own baggage, and I'm speaking generally, not just of my part. You know, the Marxist left, uh, this is a sweeping generalization, perhaps unfair, but I'll make it. You know, when you have lived through so many setbacks and a period of passivity in the working class and your, your ranks are shrinking and not swelling, uh, you lose a little confidence. Your, polit your politics gets a little shaky. You become a little dependent on the moderate forces. You don't feel you can do anything. And uh, what does this mean? I think that if some of those young people would have asked some of us, should they uh, occupy Wall Street, we'd try to talk them out of it. Or tell them they should get a permit, or wait until some union uh, supports them, you know. How can we help them? Number one, do not tame them. Do not dare pour cold water on their militancy. Don't drag them into the Democratic Party. Number two, don't try to take them over. That would be a catastrophe. Number three, don't lecture them. 
work inside the movement. We're working inside the Occupy movement and try to push them toward the working class and solidarity with the oppressed and an anti-imperialist and an anti-capitalist position and towards socialism. But this will take work, but there's great fruit to be born from that work. Right now, Time. we're working with people to build May Day, and some of the best elements in the Occupy movement are building May Day 2012 with immigrants and workers. That's a great development. 